over the weekend, I visited Red Deer, Alberta. What a great city. And I went to the largest political convention, I think, in Canadian history. Now, I don't want to say that in such a sweeping way because there's a chance, for example, in the dirty 30s in Alberta when the Social Credit Party was a response to the Great Depression, there's a chance they may have had 6,000 people meeting back then. But other than that, I can't think of a political convention this big. Now, I was there to visit my friend Sheila Gunn-Reed, our chief reporter, and Angelica Toy, who were on the ground. I did some schmoozing and said hi myself. What a delightful event. And here to give us the report on the facts, not just the feelings, is our friend Sheila Gunn-Reed. Sheila, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, come on. It's great to see you. I really enjoyed being out there. And a reminder that Albertans actually care about freedom and ideas. And I don't know, I felt really enthused. I was enthused by the reaction I got from ordinary Albertans who love Rebel News. And I thought Danielle Smith proved that she really is Canada's leading freedom-fighting premier. I like Scott Moe. I like you know, uh, some things by this premier or that premier there. But I think all around, Danielle Smith is putting Alberta back in the driver's seat in terms of a freedom agenda. What do you think? Yeah, you know, Rebel News, by the way, I should say this right off the hop, really well received, not just by the people there. There were nearly 6,100 people in attendance there, um, which it it was Canada's largest political convention to date. Uh, It dwarfed last year's Canada's largest political convention to date, which was the last UCP AGM. Um, But the MLAs and members of government and their staff had a lot of time for us at Rebel News, um, which might be unsettling to my friends at the company who live and work in Doug Ford's version of conservatism. But Danielle Smith is really positioning herself as the leader of the political movement to protect civil liberties and to learn from the lessons of the bonfire of civil liberties of the COVID-19 pandemic and the government overreaction that followed. Uh, I think her base was really energized by her slate of anti-transition for minors policies that came late last week, but also uh, her entrenchment of civil liberties into our Public Health Act and the uh, ensuring of in-person education during a public health emergency for kids. So all the things that saw Jason Kenney ousted, she is doing her best to make sure that that never happens again in Alberta. And that's exactly why she's the premier now. You know, you said a lot of things, sir. Let me react to the first thing you said. Well, no, that's great. You're giving us a lot of info. Um, I regard how conservative politicians interact with Rebel News as a kind of litmus test. You Mm -hmm. might think I only consider those factors as a matter of vanity or my own feelings. Do I like the fact that I can banter with this politician or that one? Well, I suppose, sure. But that's not why it's important. I think it's important as a proxy for, will you let the mean girls of the regime media bully you if you talk to conservative citizen journalists who are, you know, not with the cool kids? And Uh, Because I think that if you're afraid to even talk to Rebel News or other independent citizen journalists on the right, if you're afraid not because there's something wrong with us, but because you're afraid what the CBC will say about it or what the Globe and Mail Mm -hmm. will say about it, and they'll do a story, why did you meet with them? They'll try and do a cancel culture gotcha. If you're afraid to do that, then you're going to be afraid of everything. You're going to be afraid of your own shadow, and you will be bullied out of doing the right thing. So it's not so much that I I mean, it, it is a wonderful feeling to be embraced by by senior public leaders, but not for the vanity, but rather for the proof right. that they're immune to peer pressure. And I saw some regime media journalists there, including, for example, the CBC. And it's great to know that the CBC does not have the the political leaders of Alberta in their thrall, as I think you know, the federal conservatives under Andrew Scheer and Aaron O'Toole and other conservatives, I mean, you mentioned Doug Ford, they're afraid of us, not because we're bad, but because they are too under the spell of the regime media. Yeah. And just to your point, because as I said, or as you said, I did say a lot of things that you probably want to address, but um, 
I, it's not, I, I don't need to be liked by politicians. I prefer to be feared by them. And I think, again, learning from what happened to Jason Kenney, I think Danielle Smith realizes that a majority of her base look to us to properly report on her accomplishments, but also, as we did with Jason Kenney, properly report on her failures and push her in the right direction because all the forces of the political world and the culture are going to be pulling her towards the center and the left. And it's our job to ask, act as something to the right of that, to, to make sure that she never becomes disconnected from the very people who sent her to office. You're completely right. You know, people sometimes say, Ezra, what's Rebel News going to do if and when Justin Trudeau is finally thrown out? What will be your raise on Detra? And I say, are you kidding me? It'll become even more important because it's easy mm -hmm. to criticize Trudeau now. Even some regime journalists are doing that. But if, let's say, Paul, Pierre Polyev wins federally, well, first of all, every single other force will be pulling him to the left. We need to be a counterbalance and we need to hold him to account in good faith when he, uh, if he abandons conservative ideas. And finally, we need to be there to correct the gotcha BS journalism that'll be targeted at him. So we have worked with quote, right-wing leaders before. And in the case of Jason Kenney, he wasn't freedom-oriented enough, so we criticized him in good faith. And that had much more impact on, let's say, grassroots conservative activists in Alberta than if the CBC would criticize Kenney from the left. So I feel that's our role with the Alberta UCP, United Conservative Party. I like the fact that Danielle Smith comes on our show because I like to give that access to our viewers. But it to me, it shows that she's not a scaredy cat of the regime journalists and the mean girls. And by the way, they were out already. One of the important things that Danielle Smith announced is to put some meat on the bones of her transgenderism policy, which, which protects women's sports, protects minor children from getting irreversible surgery before they're old enough to make those decisions. And already you can see the deep state in, they're, they're appalled by this. I saw Nahid Nenshi, the leader of the NDP, and I forget the name of the uh, LGBTQ. Janice SL. Irwin. Janice Irwin, thank you. They had a press conference denouncing Danielle Smith. And the first thing I could think of was they don't have skin in the game. Nahid is a confirmed bachelor, and good for him. You know, uh, I do not care, but he sure is obsessed with other people's kids. And I and it's really weird, a weird vibe. People who are furious that that men can't go into women's change rooms. People who are furious that parents now get notice of sex ed in the classroom. Why are you furious about that? Especially if you don't have kids of your own. Why are you trying to interpose yourself between a child and its parent. There's something creepy going on and there's so much peer pressure on this issue. Yeah. It's probably the most peer pressure-y issue out there. This will test Danielle Smith's commitment to her ideas, don't you think? I do. However, I think she is doing her best to take a balanced approach. And we all know she's a bit of a libertarian or a lot of a libertarian on these sorts of issues. And she's saying like, look, you wanna be an adult, do whatever you want but you don't get to punch women in the face in the boxing ring and you're not going to trans kids. And, and I, while it seems peer pressure from the mainstream media and the liberals, and I'm probably repeating myself by making a distinction there, normal people know what this is all about. Yeah. Like normal people don't diverge from each other on this viewpoint. And it is a viewpoint that kids should not be transed as minors and that parents should know and that men shouldn't fight women. This is a, it's a viewpoint that spans political backgrounds. And I see the liberals are already weighing in. I see Marcy Ian, Justin Trudeau's DEI minister, weighing in on how she thinks that 12 year olds should be given cross sex hormones. Well, Marcy, I hope you campaign on that at the door, go into door knocking on that issue. Um, and we know that the liberals are already funding their culture war proxy groups like EGAL to drag Daniel Smith into court for the next five years to make sure that these policies are never fully implemented. Because Justin Trudeau can't meddle in education and health. Those are provincial jurisdiction. So he funds these proxy groups with Canadian tax dollars to do it for him. Mm -hmm.